biology my passion i am saumya harikrishna we will learn the new chapter in physics the light reflection and refraction uh, since this involves a lot of diagrams it's convenient for me to use a screen so let's start in this chapter we are talking about basically light what is light light we know it is a form of energy right in photosynthesis also you come across the word light energy is converted into chemical energy so it's a form of energy so this form of energy has two natures some scientists are of opinion that it is wave nature some are telling that it is particle nature okay so they have actually both the nature wave nature as well as the particle nature so wave means it is an electromagnetic wave particle means the units are of energy are called photons you must have come across the word photons light has velocity its velocity changes in different uh, medium the maximum uh, velocity of light is experienced in vacuum or it is nearly similar in air also which is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second this value you should by heart the, va the velocity of light in vacuum or air is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second as the chapter name suggests we are learning two properties of light here so one property is the reflection of light the second is the refraction of light so imagine you have uh, two uh, materials one is an opaque one the other one is transparent one you know the difference between opaque and uh, transparent you can see the paper here this paper uh, is covering me right suppose if I am holding like this are you able to see me no why because the paper is opaque through which the light cannot pass and uh, you cannot see me at the same time I am taking a folder like this this is a transparent folder you can see that it's not very transparent but you can see me through this right keeping a paper inside the folder you will be able to see that paper so that means what light is passing through it so there are two cases first one the light is not allowed to pass so what happens to the light falling on this it is bouncing back okay so that process is called a reflection whereas if the light is allowed to pass through that is called a refraction so these two properties we are learning so imagine you are putting a ball on the a wall the ball bounces back that is reflection here instead of ball the light rays are reflecting back whereas if it is passing through that and going to the other side then it is called a refraction we are going to learn this as two different uh, different divisions in this chapter first we will deal with the reflection and then we will go to refraction suppose this is a plane or the surface okay the, uh, this part is the reflecting surface and this is the perpendicular drawn to that surface that is called a normal so any ray falling on this will be bouncing back because it is an opaque one okay whereas if it is refraction means what suppose this is the glass or the transparent medium and this is the normal what happens if it is falling on this this will be slightly bending but still it is passing through it it is going to the other side because this side and this side but here it is on the same side understood so that is the uh, reflection and a refraction difference another point we have to discuss here is light seems to travel in straight lines suppose i am standing uh, behind a wall and if i am talking my friend is on the other side of the wall my friend will be able to hear me but will not be able to see me why because the sound can bend and go so that's why it is reaching the ear of the next person whereas light always travels in straight lines so it cannot bend and see see i can see whatever is straight in front of me i cannot look uh, what is i cannot look behind a wall or something uh, because light cannot bend so light always travel in straight lines then an object reflects light falls on it the reflected light when received by our eyes enables us to see things so this is the explanation for how can we see objects suppose i am seeing this pen means what light is falling on this pen after reflecting from the pen the reflected light uh, rays are coming to my eyes only then my eye will take it and my optic nerve will take it to the the image to the brain and if we perceive that what is this so how do we see objects so when a reflected ray from an object falls on my eye only then i will be able to see it that is the reason why imagine if you are standing in light and something is kept in darkness will you be able to see that object no because there is no light reflecting from that object but think of the situation uh, reverse situation where the object is in light but you are in a dark room but still you will be able to see the object in light why because the light coming from that object can fall on your eyes so whenever there is light only or uh, the vis uh, visibility is there understood 
Now, uh, when we talk about reflection, you know that if the surface is highly smooth and polished, definitely the reflection will be very high. That is why in mirrors and all, where we have to see our own image, we are using uh, silver uh, as a coating because silver has a very good reflecting surface and it reflects almost all the uh, lights falling on it. But if the reflecting surface is rough, the reflecting lights will be scattered and it may not be that much clear. When we talk about reflection, we have to learn two laws of reflection care very carefully. Uh, listen, these two laws are applicable to all type of mirrors. For example, if it is a plane mirror or a spherical mirror, I will tell you what are they. Uh, so the loss of reflection states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So here you can see a diagram where this is a surface or a plane, we call it as plane, plane or a surface. Here is a brown shade on the other side that means that side is the, not the reflecting surface. So this is the reflecting surface. So you can see a ray falling on it, this is called a incident ray. Okay. So it is falling at this point but it is not able to go. Uh, through the medium since it is opaque so it is reflecting back so the light ray which is reflecting back is called a reflected ray so imagine it's not a single uh, incident ray coming from an object a large number of rays will be coming from the object it falls on the surface and it will be reflected back and you can see a perpendicular line drawn here this is called a, the normal to the surface so a few more things we will discuss now uh, one is the reflection of uh, at a plane of surface that is uh, again this is the mirror this is the non reflecting surface the other side so this is the reflecting surface so the perpendicular is called a normal and the light falling is called a incident ray so here a is the incident ray the arrow mark will show you which is the incident ray and you can see this is going out so the arrow should be this side this is the reflecting ray b is the reflected ray now this normal is there now what is happening there is an angle formed between the normal and the incident ray so this angle is called the angle of incidence the same way reflected ray also makes a, an angle with the normal that is called the angle of reflection so usually for a mirror whether it is plane mirror or spherical mirror the angle of incidence will be equal to angle of reflection so this is the first law of reflection. Now the second law states that all these are in the same surface, right? So incident ray, normal, reflected ray, everything is in the same plane. So this is called what? The second law of reflection. It is the incident ray, the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. When we talk about reflection, we are talking about mirrors. When we talk about refraction, we are talking about lens. Okay, so now since we are talking about the first aspect that is reflection, we talk about only mirrors. Mirrors can be two types. One is called uh, the plane mirror. The other one is called uh, the spherical mirror. So plane mirror means it's uh, having a flat surface which we used to see our images usually like makeup mirrors and all. Whereas spherical mirror means uh, the spherical mirror is the one which is having a curved surface. Actually, it is cut out from a sphere. Okay. So uh, a part is cut out so we will get a, a curved surface. This can be of two types. One is called a concave. The other one is called a convex. Here you can see a few examples of spherical mirrors. You can see their surface is curved. So we are getting a wider field of view inside this. So mirrors whose reflecting surfaces are spherical are called a spherical mirrors. That means it, the reflecting side is uh, curved. That is called a spherical mirrors. Now, what are the characteristics of image formed by a plane mirror? Image formed by a plane mirror means what you go and stand in front of a mirror and see how your image looks. Those are the characteristics. So the first one is image formed by a plane mirror is always virtual and erect. Means your image you will be seeing erect and uh, once you move away from the mirror, the image also will move away. You cannot capture it on the mirror because it is formed inside the mirror okay it's not outside on a screen so if you are, since you are not getting it on a screen that is called a virtual uh, image and virtual images are always erect we will study in detail about it then the size of the image is equal to that of the object that is uh, if i am looking at the mirror i'll see the si my same size inside the mirror right neither 
to uh, bigger than my size or lesser than my size then image form is as per behind the mirror as the object is in front of it suppose if i am standing 10 steps away from the mirror my image will also be 10 steps inside the mirror if i move little farther my image will also move farther away if i come closer to the mirror my image will also come closer to the mirror then image is laterally inverted for example if i am wearing my dupatta on this side this is my left side but in the mirror how will i see it will be on my right side so that is called a lateral inversion or it is visible with a certain uh, letter suppose if i write seven and i show it after in a mirror i will see like this right so suppose i am writing s in the mirror it will be s this is called a lateral inversion but this lateral inversion has an application in our life that is the ambulance if you have noticed how is it written in front of the ambulance in the reverse way why is it written so when the vehicle going in front if sees through the rear view mirror it can easily read ambulance easily so that it can give way for that plane mirror we are learning only about the characteristics of image form and about plane mirrors and all you have learned in uh, smaller classes now we are learning or we are focusing on spherical mirrors so there are two types of spherical mirrors as i mentioned concave and uh, convex so the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror may be curved inwards or outwards a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards that is faces towards the center of the sphere and is called a concave mirror so i told it is a part of a sphere okay so if it is forming this is the part of this reflecting surface okay and this is a non reflecting surface light is falling on the surface okay then it is reflecting then we can call this side as the uh, because it is curved inwards so inwards means what it is a concave mirror whereas if the reflecting surface is the other side for example again the same mirror if i take suppose this one if i take this side here light is falling then getting reflected this is curved outwards right bulging is outside so outward curve is outside is reflecting that is convex and uh, inside is reflecting that is concave so if a spoon you take also it has got concave and a convex sides this will show you light is coming from the left side imagine here always we are taking light from the left side only so reflecting surface curved inwards here it is bulged outwards so what is this is which mirror yes concave this is which mirror convex now now we are going to discuss a few points or a, a def definitions related to this mirror which is important to understand for us to go further in this chapter the first one is about something called a pole okay pole of a mirror see the center of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is a point and is called a pole suppose this is the reflecting surface you can see in this picture this is the central point that is called a pole which is represented by a letter p so it is on the surface of the mirror pole is on the surface of the mirror because it is the center of that spherical surface or the reflecting surface now second one we can see that it is a part of a mirror you can see this dotted line that's the entire sphere from which the mirror has been taken so imagine that entire sphere is there that sphere has got a center that is called a center of curvature so even if you are taking only this part it was a part of the sphere and the center of that sphere is called a center of curvature so it is represented by c then uh, the center of curvature of the mirror is lying in front of it okay but in convex it is behind it so here this is a reflecting surface light is coming from this side means in front itself the c is lying but here light is coming from here so the center of curvature is behind the mirror radius of the sphere of which the reflecting surface forms a part that means from c to p that distance is called a radius of curvature the radius of curvature is represented by a letter r if there is a line we are drawing passing through the pole and the center of curvature here you can see there is a line connecting all these center of curvature and pole and this imagine it's an imaginary line that is called a principal axis this is principal principal axis of a 
concave mirror this is the principal axis of a convex mirror then you can see from here till here this is the diameter of the uh, spherical mirror then that is called a aperture usually principal axis is normal to the mirror at its pole because it's falling perpendicular to the pole normal means what perpendicular a number of rays parallel to the principal axis are falling on a concave mirror observe the reflected rays they are all meeting or intersecting at a point on the principal axis of the mirror this point is called a principal focus of, of the concave mirror this one uh, concave mirror you can see whereas this is convex mirror okay so here all these are parallel rays coming they all reflect and they join at a point this is called a focus of this mirror whereas here also they are reflecting but we don't know from where they are reflecting so if you produce this line backwards we can see that they all start to emerge from a single point then that is called a focus of the convex mirror so all the rays falling on the mirror parallel to the principal axis after reflection joins at a point or uh, coincides at a point uh, on the principal axis that point is called a focus of the concave mirror the same way light rays falling parallel to the principal axis after reflection appear to emerge from a point that is called a what the focus of the convex mirror so here you can see all the, these are converging or coming together to a point so this is called a converging mirror here but they are spreading out from a point so this is called a divergent mirror so always remember concave mirror is converging convex mirror is diverging position and size of the image formed by a concave mirror depends on the position of the object in relation to p f and c the image formed is real for some positions of the object it is found to be virtual for a certain other position the image is either magnified reduced or has the same size depending on the position of the object so here we are talking about three aspects we are coming back to this diagram this has got center of curvature and a pole so on the principal axis or here infinity anywhere the object can be there so different positions on the principal axis the image position and image size and image nature will change so three things you are talking about position size and nature so position if you are talking about it can be in front of the mirror or behind the mirror and also which place whether it is beyond the center of curvature or at the focus whatever we will learn about it now second aspect is the size size can be again two types three types some are the magnified means the enlarged images will be formed that means more than the actual size of the object will be the image size then second is a same size means sometimes we get the same size of the object as the image uh, and uh, third part is a diminished meaning means we get a smaller or uh, smaller image than the actual size next is the nature of the image the image can be real image or virtual image so that you have to remember there are two types of images formed real image and a virtual image now we will discuss the differences between real and virtual images so the first point here is light rays actually meet to form a real image light does not actually meet to form a virtual image look at this image formation in the first one these lights after reflection they are actually joining at a point that means they are meeting each other so as a result if an image is forming by actual meeting of the reflected rays then that is called a real okay whereas in this case you can see they are not actually meeting but they are they appear to start from one point or in other cases also they will not actually meet but we can imagine that they are starting from a point where they meet so there is no actual meeting so that such uh, images are called a, what virtual images the next point if it is a real image along with that immediately you have to write the next word inverted real images are always inverted 
whereas if it is virtual image they are erect then these images can be obtained on a screen uh, like in the case of a movie the images which can be obtained on a screen are called uh, real images whereas virtual images they are not only not there but we can see them in the mirror itself for example if i look at my image on the mirror i can see my image inside but i am not getting it on a screen once i move out it is going because it's inside formed inside that right so such uh, images are called a uh, virtual images so hereafter when we are discussing the different image formation we will be coming across these words frequently position size that is magnified or same size or diminished or we will come across the real and uh, inverted or virtual and uh, erect images as well first we are going to study about image formation by a concave mirror for different positions of the object we are considering six different positions one if the image is at infinity infinity means not that space we are talking about suppose i am sitting here and i am using a mirror to locate something outside my house maybe a tree or a building little away from me that is called what infinity okay a few meters away is called a infinity the second position is beyond c third position is at c then between c and f at f between p and f so if i show this suppose if i am drawing here this is c this is f okay so we learned this is the r that is radius of curvature and the distance between focus and the pole is called a focal length so there is a relationship between r and focal length r is equal to twice the focal length or focal length is equal to r by 2 okay now we are talking about the image formation we are coming from left to right so first uh, here if i keep something this is called a uh, infinity then i am keeping some object here this is beyond c because this is c the image is kept sorry object is kept beyond c if i am keeping an object at c this position is at c now next position what is possible between c and f the next position is at f next position is between f and uh, p so this is p right so we have six positions this position is called a infinity what is this beyond c at c between c and f at f between f and p so these are the six positions okay 1 2 3 4 five and uh, six positions now image formation if you see that is also different for different positions if um, image object is at infinity we will get the image at a uh, focus so we are starting from focus here at focus i will get the image but it will be point sized okay now second position if it is beyond c so object is coming from right to left now i am going from left to right so after f which is the position after f the position is between c and f so if beyond c i will get an image just between c and f it is smaller than the actual size so we can say it is diminished but uh, it is real and uh, inverted because inverted so real and uh, inverted what is the next position at c at c means the object also will be at c same size real and uh, inverted then next uh, between c and f is the object so my image will be beyond c enlarged image then next position is at f see when it was at infinity we got the image at f now object is at f we will get the image at infinity okay very high enlarged highly enlarged image we will get then next position we are coming to between f and p so here all over it we came from focus between c and f at c beyond c infinity over now where is the place this side right only at this point between f and p our image will be formed on the other side it's a highly enlarged image and since it is formed up behind the mirror and it, it is virtual and uh, erect because here the rays cannot meet behind the mirror so it's a virtual image 
and since it is virtual it is erect also and it is highly enlarged here if you come back to this we know that it is at infinity at the focus highly diminished point sized and uh, real and inverted beyond c between f and c diminished real and inverted at c at c same size real and inverted between c and f beyond c enlarged real and inverted at f at infinity highly enlarged real and inverted and uh, between p and f behind the mirror enlarged virtual and erect children you have to be very thorough with this table only then you will be able to draw the ray diagrams properly first you by heart this or once you are drawing also you will get more idea about it but still you should have an idea about how it goes any object if you are taking an extended object of finite size placed in front of a spherical mirror we can make the uh, image of that on the screen each small portion of the extended object acts like a point source so from each point on the object uh, the light start emitting so an infinite number of rays are coming to the uh, viewers or the uh, screen but to construct ray diagram we don't draw all these lines because it is very tedious and also it is confusing so we take only two rays to show the uh, image wherever the two rays are intersecting or appear to intersect that is the image formation so an orbit uh, arbitrarily large number of rays emanating from a point could be considered however it is more convenient to consider only two rays for the sake of clarity of a ray diagram when you are drawing a ray diagram you should have an uh, idea about certain rules to be followed i told any two rays from the object you can take okay but how can the rays uh, go after falling on the object that is what we are discussing so first is if the ray is coming like this it is parallel to the principal axis if so it will pass through the focus after reflection suppose if it is coming through the focus it is falling on the mirror through the focus how will it go back parallel to the principal axis so it goes like this that's the second so whenever you are drawing any ray you have to follow this uh, rule third rule is if it is falling through the center of curvature it will retrace its path that means it will not undergo any deviation it will go back because this is falling normal to the means perpendicular to the surface now if it is falling at an angle to the pole okay this is a normal then it will reflect back with the same angle that is if this is angle of incidence with the same angle it will reflect back that is angle of reflection once again if the ray is coming parallel to the principal axis then what will happen it will reflect back through the focus in the second case if the ray is passing through the focus after reflection it will go parallel to the principal axis if the ray is coming through the center of curvature without deviation it will retrace its path if it is falling obliquely at an angle uh, at the pole then it will reflect back at the same angle so here it proves angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection same way we follow rules for convex mirror also more or less the same only but only difference is if it is coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection it appear to emerge from focus because we are seeing only this side right these dotted lines we can't see because it is the other side of the mirror so we Im imagine or assume that it has started from a focus okay it because it is directed towards the focus it's coming from the focus the same way if it is directed towards the focus means it's pointing towards the focus after reflection it will go parallel to the principal axis and if it is pointing towards the center of curvature it will retrace its path we will see only this part the solid line so it is coming and retracing its path the same direction then if it is falling at an angle it will retrace uh, reflect after the with the same angle that is angle of inf uh, incidence is equal to angle of reflection so using these rules now we will see the uh, ray diagrams how can we see the for image formation at a different positions that we discuss if you remember we discussed uh, six positions which are they tell with me yes infinity beyond c at c between c and f at f between f and p now we will see one by one which was the first position of the object which we learned infinity so i am drawing one object at a infinity now 
now we will draw now we will draw the lines coming from it the rays coming from it the first ray is coming straight that is parallel to the principal axis so if it is parallel to the principal axis after reflection it should pass through the focus the second ray we are taking from the bottom of the object any two rays you can choose so here uh, the second ray also since it is parallel after reflection it will pass through the focus so these two rays are meeting at this point focus and this is the image formation so object at infinity image at f point sized diminished what is the nature real and inverted because they are real because they are actually meeting right the rays are meeting so we can say it is real but it is inverted image the next position we are discussing is beyond c so somewhere here i can draw the line because this is beyond c first ray is coming parallel to the principal axis so it is reflecting through the focus second i am taking through the focus so after reflection it will go parallel to the principal axis so in this case these two rays are meeting here at this point so this is my image so this is the image which i got you can see that image of formation is between c and f what is the nature size of the image it is diminished means smaller and also it is real and inverted see the next position at to c at to c if you want to get the proper uh, image you have to mark the c and f properly okay so the so same distance you have to take so first line as usual we are taking from the uh, top of the object that is running parallel to the principal axis so after reflection it will come through the focus second one passing through the focus so it is coming back through uh, parallel to the principal axis so these two rays are meeting at this point so if you produce a line here this is the image you can see image is a same size of the object it is real and inverted and what is the position at c so this is the only place where uh, object distance and image distance are same okay what is the next position you can imagine it is between c and f check here first ray we are taking parallel so after reflection it goes through the focus second one is passing through the focus so it will be retracing its path so these two lines are uh, joining here so here forms the image this position is beyond c this is real and inverted what is the size it is enlarged so previous one was same size but now it is enlarged image next position of the object is at f okay so here first one as usual parallel passing through the focus second one we will take through the center of curvature we expect them to meet at infinity okay so the uh, object is at f so image at infinity what is the nature it is real and inverted and it is enlarged so now last position is between f and p uh, so object is here first line is falling obliquely to the principal axis so it is uh, reflecting at the same angle second one is passing through the center of curvature so nowhere these two rays are meeting so we are producing the line behind and we expect them to meet behind the mirror so here they are meeting so this is our image but since they are not actually meeting it is a virtual image so this is the only position where concave mirror is giving you a virtual image and also it is enlarged and 
highly enlarged and also it is uh, erect because since it is virtual it is erect also so we found that uh, first take if you see the positions at a different positions we found the image formation size if you see we found enlarged same or diminished all three kinds are present in concave mirror so they produce all sizes of images the same way concave mirror can produce real and inverted image all the other positions and the last position between f and p it produces virtual and erect so almost every kind is coming under concave mirror so concave mirror can produce real image virtual image large image same size image and a diminished image now we will see the image formation by convex mirrors convex mirror means what the reflecting surface is the bulged outwards so light is coming from the side here first two positions only we are studying one is at infinity the second one between infinity and pole anywhere from infinity if the rays are coming they are coming parallel so they appear to diverge because we can see only this side as i mentioned appears to diverge from the point on the principal focus behind the mirror that is focus so what is the position it is uh, forming at a focus but on the other side or uh, behind the mirror what is the size point sized diminished and what is the nature are they actually meeting no they appear to meet so what is the nature virtual and erect the second position is object is placed between infinity and pole of the convex mirror anywhere on the principal axis you can draw so here we have drawn so the first line is coming parallel so appear to diverge from the focus second is going through the center of curvature or it is directed towards center of curvature so it will retrace its path so again these two are not meeting but if you produce back they appear to meet here okay so here if i draw this is my image so image where is it form behind the mirror right between p and f what is the nature it is a virtual and a erect because they are not actually meeting then next is a it is a diminished so if you compare with the uh, the concave mirror we saw here only virtual and erect image is form also only diminished image is form so if an image is a virtual and erect only then it is uh, our convex mirror and if it is always diminished that also convex mirror so hope you understood all the ray diagram first you have to learn the positions and uh, of a object image very well the nature and all you can derive from the ray diagram if you understand that then the second thing is uh, you have to learn the rules to draw ray diagrams how does the incident ray uh, reflect after the ref uh, falling on the mirror that is very important so we are coming to the last part of this uh, topic that is uses of concave mirrors first concave mirrors are commonly used in torches search lights and vehicle headlights what is required here what is common here parallel beam of light so if you want the reflected ray to be parallel through which point it has to come focus we learn if they are coming through the focus after reflection it will go parallel so here it is focus so parallel beams will go uh, near the from the focus right so uh, position of the uh, objective as it is focus second is used as shaving mirrors to see larger image of the face so we know that large image is obtained at different places but only between p and f we are getting an erect image using concave mirror rest all positions even though the image is enlarged but it is uh, inverted so it is very difficult for us to use it as a shaving mirror if it uh, image is inverted so we have to keep our face closer that is between p and f then the dentist use concave mirrors to see large images here also we want enlarged image so where should the object be between p and f the dental mirror should be kept very close to your teeth to see the enlarged image then large concave mirrors are used to concentrate light to produce heat in solar furnace so you know that uh, the solar furnaces have a, it's a box the lid has concave mirror here so the light falling uh, parallel to it will converge to a point it's a converging mirror right so converge to a point at uh, focus so the uh, heating uh, sub object to be heated should be kept at the focus so all the rays will be converging there.
so these are the uses of concave mirror into the uses of convex mirror they are commonly used as rear view mirrors in vehicles so while driving we want to see our through the side or behind what all vehicles are coming or overtaking and all uh, so in these mirrors we are using convex mirror because of two reasons one they always give an erect image because imagine the vehicle coming behind us is upside down uh, if you use concave mirror you will get a real and inverted image but that is of no use to us we want to see them erect always so in at any distance convex mirror will give us only erect image though it is diminished than the actual size right but a uh, second reason is they are wider field of view the since the reflecting surface is curved outwards the driver will be able to see a uh, little wider than the actual um, size of the mirror so wider field of view so two points please remember wider field of view for the driver and second one though diminish always erect image and it is also used as the theft mirrors that is usually nowadays all the shops have a cctv camera to see anybody stealing something and all but uh, before and all there was cctv camera was not very popular so that time they used to keep a concave mirror to one corner top corner of the shop so that the person sitting at the counter or anybody on the shop could look at the mirror so that they could see the wider field of the uh, shop and uh, they could see people what they are doing okay that is theft mirror we say another one now uh, sharp turns in roads highways and roads and all we keep a mirror like concave mirror so that when we, i am coming from this side i can see in the mirror any vehicle is coming opposite to me to avoid danger we can use that so these are the different things you have to study in um, re light reflection so please learn the uh, positions and all very clearly learn those definitions like what is pole what is center of curvature what is focus and all and which is converging mirror which is diverging mirror is very important concave is convergent mirror convex is diverging mirror so study well uh, i will come with the refraction part soon please give me your valuable comments through the comment box so that i will get to know about the feedback from my viewers and also uh, give a like uh, if you find it useful share it with your friends to reach out to maximum people so that they all will benefit and subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to it thank you for watching biology my passion